I hooked up with a piece of shit. That's what I'm going to call him. Yeah, he was successful. Yes, he was nice. But he blew me off. This is what I'm going to tell you guys. When you fuck a woman and you ghost her, you're a piece of shit. That's it. I know you might feel crowded or pressured or avoidant or you just want to be left alone. But basically, to me, you're a piece of shit. You don't just blow off a woman that you're fucking. Like you come on all nice and sweet and all this, you know. And then you just blow her off. That's why women don't want to hook up. You guys, I had a long conversation with this guy that I just made the video about who just likes to use his dick. And he was like, yeah, I just, I don't know why women don't want to just fuck me. I'm like, because you ghost us. You fuck us and you leave us. We don't like that. Well, why can't it just be one time? Why can't it just be one time? What's the big deal? Because if it feels good, we want a reenactment. And I will never again fuck a guy who's going to fuck me and blow me off. That shit is over. I am going to ask a lot more questions and going to be a lot more demanding and I'm going to treat the guys I fuck like I treat my clients. I'm going to screen them because what I did with these guys I was fucking, what I did with my ex-husband, I acted like a little girl with her daddy. Let's get real here. I acted like a little girl with her daddy. I got back into that one down position where I made the man the authority and get this fucked up move on my part. I'm going to own that I did some shitty stuff. When the guy blows me off and I tell him I don't, I'm done with him and I am done, I start thinking I should let him know that I'm not mad at him. Like I'm trying to fix the fact that this guy who's a piece of shit was a piece of shit. I am just seeing some of my like automatic behaviors and I'm sharing them with you so you can see like someone like me. <laughs> I intimidate a lot of men. A lot of men are intimidated by me. They've told me that. Even very successful men have told me that. But when it comes to guys I like, I revert to this um, immature little girl position treating men like daddy not consciously like I want to fuck my daddy but in the same energetic way that I have to be pleasing to them I shouldn't ask for too much you know I should let them lead um if they if they leave me I try to get them back I try to fix it and then I try to reassure them that even though they were pieces of shit that I still like them that's how kids act. For a long time, I was thinking, I'm treating these guys like, because I kept noticing years ago that I was kept trying to like reach out to these guys that blew me off. And I thought it was because that's how I was used to being as a wife and a mother, like relational. But it's a fucking fucked up childhood pattern. The more we can see our childhood patterns, the more free we will be. And that's the power of dating and getting into relationships. You can see your patterns and free yourself. And I have to tell you, like the whole today, I just felt so much more free. Just starting to see some of my patterns. I just feel like so much more free. So until a few years ago, I was still afraid of my dad. He never hit me or anything, but I was just afraid of him, getting him mad. You know, if I tell, I couldn't tell him how I felt or, you know, I had to be the way he wanted me to be. I couldn't ask for too much. And I do that with these guys. I saw my mom, I saw my stepmom being submissive to my dad. And I thought that's how relationships should be. And so that's how I treat these guys. Like this guy I hooked up with, he never even made me come. I didn't expect him to. I didn't expect him to. What? The, how fucked up is that? I was just happy that he wanted to fuck me. And I am not ashamed. I am embarrassed. <laughs> like, shit, Charizard, what the fuck? I am embarrassed. 
I'm sharing this with you because I want to be honest. I want to be vulnerable. And, I, and that's going to help you guys to see your patterns. Where And I'm not the only one who does that. I talk to other people. They're afraid. Many of us are afraid. Probably everyone. You're either grandiose, talking down to people, or you're in a one-down position from shame trying to get someone's approval. So where we all have to get is see our patterns and be in an equal position with people. You know, um, seeing our patterns is the first part. Yeah, that guy was a piece of shit. He certainly didn't deserve me. Um, I didn't even know his last name. He never even tried to make me come. Uh, however, I will say this. I did not retaliate against him like I could have. I know he t shared things with me. I didn't throw them back in his face. I didn't throw his weaknesses or his past or anything in his face. I didn't put him down. I didn't try to get him in trouble for some of the things he shared with me. I just told him I didn't want to see him anymore. Okay. So my side of the street is clean. The only thing I did wrong was put myself in a one down position with this guy who treated me like shit by blowing me off. You know, he didn't keep his agreements. He lied to me said he would get back to me about when he would see me again, and then he just withered away like a fucking little coward. Fucking little coward. Piece of shit. Anyway, uh, so one other thing I'm doing, I'm taking this rela relational life therapy therapist course from T uh, Terry Real. Um, it's an online course, and that's helping me a lot in my coaching business and dealing with people because in that course as therapists, we are supposed to kind of challenge people or join them in the truth, so to speak. So it's about showing people where they didn't show up. For example, I have this coaching client. He signed up for four weeks of coaching. He might even be watching this video right now. And um, the first call went very well. He was very vulnerable with me and shared things that were going on in his relationship. And on the morning of the second call we were supposed to have, I messaged him to tell him I was looking forward to our call. And two hours before, he said he was very busy at work. He couldn't make it. He did appreciate our first call. So I messaged him back and asked if he wanted to do the remaining two calls. Never got back to me. So two days later, I asked him again. He didn't get back to me. So I canceled the remaining sessions. And I emailed him and I said, running away is probably what's causing you some of the problems in your relationship. If you're running away from your coach, you're probably running away in your relationship. I've canceled our remaining sessions and I wish you all the best. Like, you know, like what's my role as a coach? Sometimes people are pieces of shit as clients. You know, they wither away. They uh, don't keep their appointments. They slither away. Um, you know, like if you can't even keep your agreements with your coach or your hookup buddy, um... I'm not going to call my coaching client a piece of shit. I won't do that. Um, but I will say that how you show up says a lot about you. And I'm not going to put up with any more bullshit. Free coaching clients, I'm just going to offer them one appointment. Any other appointments after that, they will have to pay something. They will have to commit with the payment for the other sessions. And um, guys I hook up with, I want to, go, I want to know their name their full name, I'm going to go to their house, and I'm going to ask for a lot of stuff before I fuck them. They're going to have to make me come before they can ever slide their dick in my pussy. Um, yeah, that's about it. Just raising my standards. Raising my standards. I remember years ago, I was hooking up with guys. If I liked them, I wouldn't use a condom. This was right after my divorce. And after they started ghosting me, I'm like, you know what? Everyone's going to use a condom. And I remember my daughter saying, raising your standards, mom, raising your standards. And that's what I do after every guy who acts like a piece of shit. I'm like, that was my fault. I brought it on. I allowed it. And I'm raising my standards. So I'm going to call this video, raising my standards. <laughs> and now I'm going out. Thank you for watching my video. Oh, yeah. And some of you guys like to see what I'm wearing. So, by the way, no one ever comes up and talks to me when I go out, so 
that's um i like a video about that but just in brief i think that women have to go up to men and say hi because men don't come up to us because they don't want to be labeled as creeps and they don't want to be rejected so ladies you got to start saying hi to men even in the grocery store wherever just start saying hi to men because they're lonely people don't talk to them they're afraid to approach us women are always like why aren't men approaching us they don't want to be rejected and they don't want to be labeled as creeps and they don't want to have the cops called on them because a lot of men feel like if I let a woman know I like her or talk to her, she's going to be angry and I'll get in trouble. So we started this whole thing with the Me Too movement. So it's up to us to drop our handkerchiefs, give her a little smile and just give some love to the men. Not sex. I'm just saying, just tell them hi, just smile at them. That's really all they want. As a woman to smile at them and that's what I do on my just for fans some of my photos I just give them a nice smile you know they want to look at a nice happy smile anyway thanks for watching my video